How's it going, everybody? This is Beat the Bush. I am very interested in sleeping in the car, not for comfort reasons, but for saving money. If you go somewhere for a day trip and you spend the night at an Airbnb or a hotel, it's gonna cost you somewhere between 50 to $100. Now, if you sleep in the car, you're gonna save this. And personally, I'd rather spend this money on eating Having said all of this, I'm gonna show you all the tips and tricks I've learned so far on how to make this as comfortable as possible. First, you think you wanna to go to camp mode, but if it's on auto, it's gonna turn the fan a little bit too high and it's also gonna run the AC. The AC is gonna eat up your battery, so I actually want to turn it off of auto and I turn it all the way down to two turn off the AC if it's not hot or anything. And generally at the fan speed or two, you get enough oxygen in the car. My experience has been it consumes anywhere between 25 and 50 miles of range. Of course, if the difference between your cabin temperature and the outside is a lot, it's gonna consume more range. If it's really cold, you want to set the cabin temperature a little bit low. And generally I have been setting it at 64 and I think I can actually go down a little bit further at 60 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's a hot summer night, you want Want to turn the internal temperature a little bit higher so that it doesn't have to run the AC as hard. This is of course within your tolerance of comfort. You don't want to say it's so cold that you don't get a good night's sleep or so hot that you don't get a good night's sleep. Another thing you want to watch out for is this little marker right here. If it's in circulate, well you're not going to get fresh air from outside and you're going to run out of oxygen. Definitely, definitely have it come from the outside. Also, before you go in to sleep, you want to lock your car just like that. Here's my setup. Without all this foam stuff in there, you can see that the seat is inclined a little bit by about four inches. Since my last sleeping in the car episode, I've added all this foam here to make it more level so that you can sleep a little bit better. This is my portable pillow. It turns out this is a little bit too hard. I much prefer this pillow. If I push it down, it's a bit softer than this one. This is a little bit more firm, but this is enough to make my ear hurt when I'm sleeping on it. I'm a side sleeper. You'll see from the outside, you can easily see if anyone is sleeping inside. That's why I have this test camp covering thing. This thing basically covers all your windows and it's in one big circular piece of cloth. It has two tie points over here that you tie to this thing on this side. For stealth reason, I also want to use this windshield cover over here just so that it doesn't look like people are sleeping inside. If someone sees that if you have a front windshield covering like this, no one suspect anything. But if you have like a little piece of cloth thing like this, this looks a lot more suspicious that someone is sleeping inside. Because the air circulate is on, you're never gonna fog up the windows. When the windows are not fogged up, then people are not gonna suspect someone is inside. And then clamp it on this side over here. And then you just fold these visors forward and it'll hold it in place. Let me put the rest of it up. There's actually one line here and a second line over here. You put the suction cup on the second line. You don't have to worry that people can see in from the outside because this tinting is actually really, really dark when you look in from the outside. From the inside out, you can see stuff, but from the outside in, it's really hard to see. Over here or so, I'm gonna put this over. And then this guy gets secured to these hooks. Well, you don't just hang it like that. You gotta push them in and then it gets really secured. Same thing on this other side, push it in. Now, if you want things to fit a little bit better, you can go around tucking things into the window a little bit. You don't have to do this, but it kind of makes the space a little bit bigger. Just tuck it everywhere. Tuck here, tuck there, tuck there. For the front, you go and tuck it into that corner here and also on the other side. And just like that, it's all covered 360 degrees. You cannot see inside from the outside. Check out the front. Side over here and what it looks like from the back. 
I'm about five foot eight and you can see my toes are not going to touch the end over here. This is what's needed to keep me comfortable because if I'm a little bit further down and I touch the end, well, I'm not going to be able to sleep like this. I'm going to move back up a little bit so that it's comfortable. And without moving, my head reaches over here or so. The back of the seat kind of drops off a little bit. So I do need to sleep right on the very edge of this seat. And if there's two people, if I happen to be on this side, um, I actually do have to move the seat forward about two inches before I go to sleep or else I can't move up anymore. So make sure you do this if you are taller than say five, six or so, then you do need to move the seat up. If you have the air ventilation on, most of the air comes in through the middle over here. So the fresh air will come here. If you have your face facing towards the door and you're sleeping, and if you're very sensitive like I am, if it's not above a level two of fan up there, you're gonna start feeling suffocated over here because the air does not circulate through here. The air goes through the middle. I'm all the way on the edge of one side and you can see, you can comfortably fit another person on this side over here. Notice the sleeping area is relatively flat after I put in the foam at the bottom. It's not all flat. It's a little bit tapering upwards over here, but at least most of it is flat. And I believe you can get a pretty good sleep uh, this way. The window covers are on right now. You can see the windshield. This looks very, very normal. If you go up to the side and you're just passing by, this looks like just a really dark tint if you're just driving by pretty quickly. You can't see much. Also on the back, it just looks like really dark tint. And also on the right over here. So this is pretty stealthily to me. As you can see with sunlight outside, it's really hard to see inside. Just right now I can see the fire in camp mode over here. So if you're kind of moving around, you can kind of see the screen. But what you can do to turn this off is go to display and go to screen clean mode and it's gonna turn it black like this, or mostly black. It's gonna have a little bit shining here. Security purposes, I do have a knife. Side compartment, just in case I need to protect myself. Like that. And I think if anyone tries to attack me, break the window or do something, I would have this knife. And I think the secret to protecting yourself is to looking as crazy as possible. They'll look at you and then just go, no, I'm not dealing with this. This is not worth it. So. To look crazy, I think you just gotta like do the big googly eyes and go ah! like that, you know, like wave your knife around and just kind of like do slashing, even if they're not right in front of you and you're not slashing them directly, right? Just kind of like swing it like this fast, you know, doesn't this look dangerous? Look at this. You guys not afraid? Oh my gosh, good thing you guys are behind the camera or else, I mean, just kind of like wave around. I'm scared of myself, I guess. I think bringing a gun in most places is probably illegal, especially if you are trying to camp in the residential area. And this is what I'm trying to do, stealth camping in your car. So now with all that covered, let's talk about where to stealth camp. Tesla says you can have gas savings, right? But if you camp in the car, you can also have hotel savings every year. So I'm thinking every single night you save $100. If you do this 10 nights in a year, you're saving $1,000 a year. Not only are you saving in gas, you're also saving in hotel fees. Before I go into a neighborhood and try to scope out a place that you can technically camp at, but you know, probably not legally though, because technically I don't think you're legally allowed to sleep in the car on a public road. So when you're doing this, you have to do it at your own risk. And with that said, I'm gonna show you how I just kind of get around it and try to net not get caught, I guess. Number one, I know you can sleep at a Walmart, but I just don't like the idea of sleeping there because it just seems like it's not safe enough for me. Number two, you don't sleep at businesses that close down. It might look like a nice big parking lot, but security guards go around, they're gonna kick you out. Even if you just sit in the car, they'll kick you out. So the only option left is probably to find some random abandoned street and you can go and park there. No one's going to care about you. But I think there's a danger to this because 
if you're the only one sleeping there and someone else decides to do something bad to you, then you can't really scream for help. There's not much you can do. Maybe there'll be a gang of people. And so because of this, I feel a little bit safer if you are sleeping in a residential area. Normally, you don't want all this set up. When you're driving around, going to restaurants and stuff, going to touristy areas or whatnot. So you want to put all this stuff away during the daytime and shove it all in the trunk. Before you go to your final destination of where you want to sleep, you want to prepare all of this. You want to prepare every single thing except for the little window covering everywhere. You want to do as little as possible wherever you arrive at because you don't want to disturb the peace over there. You don't want to open and close doors all the time and you know make a whole bunch of noise and people are going to I don't know, wake up and then see that there's some random car outside and it looks like someone is sleeping in it. So get to all your stuff set up and then you're ready to sleep. Go and do a hit and run. Go inside a residential neighborhood at 9 p.m. or later and wake up around 6 a.m. or so. When you wake up, don't go around packing everything. Don't go have your breakfast right outside your car. Just wake up. Do as little as possible. Don't brush your teeth even. Just put on your shoes, take off the, the covers and stuff, and then immediately drive away. Because whoever living there, maybe they're annoyed that someone is sleeping in the car. Maybe they're monitoring you already, so you want to get up, pick up, and leave. And then, you know, go a couple blocks or something. Go to some parking lot, anywhere really, because you're awake now. You can do anything that you want in your car and then do your packing up, do your brushing your teeth, go to the restroom somewhere. And this is probably all the accumulated advice I can give you guys for sleeping in the car and for saving a whole bunch of money. Thanks for watching, bye. Guest parking spot. This is not a bad place to sleep, I think. You can't park anywhere on the street over here. So you definitely can't park in someone's driveway over here nor can you park on the street. So this is not a good neighborhood to try to sleep at. Other than perhaps this guest area over here. Now this is like an area with no homes or anything. And maybe you can park where that truck is if that truck wasn't there. But I probably won't do that because this is very secluded and no one's around. Down this street, you can only park in front of the house. So I might skip over this area. You probably don't want to park where these cars are because these are right in front of a home and perhaps you can just open up the window and see some random car that's not theirs. This area looks a little bit promising because you're across the street from the houses over here and you're allowed to park over here and it's away from the street lamp. You look left, you got windows right there so you probably don't want to be here. Go a little bit more forward. Maybe if you really have to in between two homes is probably the best. What's even better is if you can park where that truck is because it's right across the street from the side of the home and they're not going to see, but this is not ideal either because they have a window right there and they can see right outside and see someone in the car over here. So you got to do a little bit of scouting. It will take you a little bit of time each day. I don't know, 15, 20 minutes or so just to find the right spot to uh, sleep in the car. It's probably best if you find a rich neighborhood because it tends to be a little bit safer rather than a janky place. Maybe you can look up Zillow and you know check the home prices if the home prices are pretty high. It might be a good chance that it's a good neighborhood. So you can park all along this street and this is pretty protected because there's a bunch of bushes over here. But this seems a little bit exposed because this is a main road and you're gonna have a lot of cars passing by so personally i prefer to go somewhere that's a little less noisy let's make a left over here get out of the traffic this is a cul-de-sac and you can't just park right here because people will know you don't belong here and there's gonna be a huge probability that any of these houses someone is gonna come out early in the morning and then be like, this is this car does not belong here. Why is there someone sleeping in there? And they're going to knock. So get out of the cold ace axe. Even though it's good for the homeowners, it's not very good for a car camper. That is actually not a bad spot right there in front of that red car, which is across the street from these houses. And there's no one on this part of the street. And there's no lights right above here. You don't want to sleep over here because it's right in front of a house, like I said before. You also don't want to sleep at the first car either because people will be able to see you're the first 
car. You want to be behind some car as well if you can. Look at what I found here. I, I bet someone is sleeping in there. I'm in this spot to the left. There's a home. They can see right out, but not further down. Where that red car is, is a pretty good spot because on the right, you see all this fence and there's no high windows that can see out. So you're protected on the right side. You're also somewhat protected on the left because there's a big fence area. And uh, I would say this is a good spot. In front of me is a park and you see a whole bunch of cars over here. I would not recommend parking right in front of a park because people would think that Maybe you're sleeping in the car, maybe you're at the park and the park has hours, so there's no reason that you should be parked here overnight. There's actually a lot of good sleeping spots in this neighborhood. This looks like a school. You probably don't want to sleep right in front of a school, like a lone car right there. Uh, don't be that lone car that's sitting there. You want to group together with other cars. Like right here, this is a pretty not bad a spot. Oh, it's a really good spot right here. Why? Because look, there's a fence right there, no windows. There's a fence right there. And well, windows can't really see through to you. Good spot right here. You might be bothered by that street lamp, but we're gonna have this covering here and it actually doesn't shine in.